Some people call this uh, the impossible triangle and it's, uh, it's a three-dimensional optical illusion and I'm going to show you how to build it today and uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at this. Your eyes tell you, your brain tells you this is a, a triangle but a triangle, you can't do that. So it's clearly not a triangle, what is it? Well, even once you see how it's made, and you see it in this configuration, your brain is still going to say, triangle. So what is it really? It's really just two sticks at 90 degrees in three dimensions. That when brought to exactly the right angle, exactly the right angle looks like a triangle so let's see if we can build a Penrose triangle out of wood um, they're usually shaped like this there are three pieces of wood the same length I'm using a one by one piece and this is just a 90 degree here like this and those are clamped together nothing special about that and then there's a piece over here and usually they cut some kind of a fancy notch in here so that when these line up you're actually seeing part of this wood go through there this piece go through there and again this is at a 90 degree and so what i'm going to do first is i'm just going to uh, screw these two together i've got a jig to hold them at 90 degrees i'm going to screw them like this glue them and be done with it so let me go do that and i'll be back it's uh, in the jig, it's glued up here, got my screw in here, so this is just the 90 degree piece, nothing to it, let it dry, and we'll go look at the other piece. The vertical piece can be kind of tricky, and I've seen different things. I've seen where they cut a really thin line across here and leave a really thin cap on top, and then they cut another notch down here, and they cut it through at a 45 degree angle like this, so there's a, there's a notch running through it like this and I've seen another one where they start uh, where you perceive the bottom edge of the of this piece you perceive the bottom edge down here going that way and they make a mark here and they cut it up to where the top edge of that piece would project and so you get this thin cap and you get a long notch and it slopes down from here at 45 degrees I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet, uh, but in any event, it ain't going to be easy. So what I've chosen to do is do the easier one and cut off a piece of wood that... Uh, I'm using one inch stock, so I'm going to cut off a piece of wood from here to here. It's one inch. I'm going to cut it through this way. I'm not going to cut it all the way through. I'm cutting it at 45 degrees. I'm holding it like this, and I'm hacksawing through there, and then I'm going to whittle it away. and. In my wildest fantasies, I'm going to leave that little cap up here on top, but I don't think so. My guess is it's going to break off and I'm going to replace it with a piece of metal or something. Uh, but that's where I am right now, cutting through there. You notice I'm not cutting all the way through, and I'm cutting through from the corner down. This is not, I'm not cutting through this way, I'm cutting from the corner down. So the trickiest part is holding this and sawing it through until you reach roughly the corner on each side. And then again, followed by whittling and sanding. So this is where I am with this. I, uh, you can see how it's been cut. It's been cut through here at a 45. Actually more than a 45 because what I'm ending up doing is the back side. You don't want to see it. You only want to see that edge right there. So I'm taking out this back in here so you can't see it when it's tipped at that critical angle. And the same is true for this piece. You want to make sure that that edge right here is hiding everything behind it. So there's this critical point where this piece is blocking the back part and this edge is blocking that part and yet this edge up here, can you see that? This edge is lined up with this edge and yeah, so it's a bit of rasping, a bit of filing. I think I'm getting pretty close. I made this awfully thick because I was just afraid of it breaking its end grain and all and it's just it's very soft wood. Uh, but yeah, uh, so the dimensions are roughly, this is the, this dimension is a little bit less than it should be, but this dimension should be about the 
thickness of the wood, so it's about one inch. And then this angle, this angle here is such that this bottom piece, this bottom point right here, lines up with the bottom edge of this piece of wood down here. Can you see that where my finger is? So it lines up with that edge. So when it's sitting here like this, I'm not going to try to line it up, but you can see this point is roughly pointed at the bottom edge here. And this edge is roughly lined up with this top edge here. And this edge up here should be lined up with this edge. So a lot of judgment to it and a lot of alignment and it's very, very critical. But anyway, this is where we are and I'm going to try screwing this on here and getting that glued up and then maybe give it a coat of paint. We'll see what happens. So here I am. I've got both arms in place. Same thing. Drill a hole. Put a screw in it. Some glue here. Uh, I think it's set up. And when you do this, make really, really sure you got that notch in the right position because <laughs> that's really key. Um, but, okay. and painted and all that so the glue i drill a hole in here so i can mount it set it up on something and if i have an improvement it would be that i would change this angle right now the angle is about straight across here i would make it even steeper like this uh, so you can't see the back of this at all that is it just uh, three pieces of wood two arms and a cross piece and uh, just some uh, very critical cuts and some angles and that's about it and even though you've seen how it's made now, your brain is still saying triangle. Well, I hope you found it interesting.